Right now, the Zakem Bridge and landmarks all across the state are lit in red, yellow, and green to commemorate Juneteenth. These tributes follow marches through Boston today, honoring the day when the last slaves learned that they were free. Juneteenth this year comes after weeks of racial unrest across the country. Our Josh Brogadier is live in Boston with the demonstrations tonight. Josh. Maria, hundreds descended on this field on this Juneteenth to make their voices heard against racism. A uh, happy Juneteenth, everybody! Juneteenth, the end of slavery in the United States. Uh, I wasn't taught about Juneteenth in public school. Now, painful omissions are being filled as 155 years later, black lives are brought more clearly into the focus. I am here on behalf of not only my predecessors, including my father. I'm here for myself, and I'm here for the future. Black Lives Matter! And organizers in Dorchester's Fields Corner made sure that message isn't forgotten today. So it's about delayed liberation. So what other day would be great to have a rally like this when we're talking about delayed liberation? We're talking about the end of mass incarceration. As the crowds grew on town field, a small counter protest arose on the street. A few men and women. You start this nation, we need you on this side, bro. Not on that, Not on that side. side. Yeah, side. side. Yeah, side. The American side. Yeah, we're, this, we're American. We're American. Police stepped in, they left, and the Black Lives Matter group applauded. <laughs> this remained, however, overwhelmingly peaceful, a commingling of artists and health workers and business owners, along with people from all walks of life, including two Massachusetts representatives, Joe Kennedy III and Ayanna Presley, among those hoping that a change is here for good. They always say that it's time to start the conversation. The conversation has already been started. Now it's time to take action. And the leaders of this rally today wanted to emphasize that yes, this was a few hours. Yes, this was one day, but this movement is not slowing down. We're live in Dorchester. Josh Brogadier, WCVB News Center 5. All right, Josh, thank you for that. Our Ted Wayman continues our team coverage with the calls for change in Dorchester tonight. Ted. Maria, those calls for change centered on police brutality and organizers use both music and mother's stories to capture a large crowd. It started with music, but quickly got to the message about police brutality. When I saw George Floyd call out for his mother, I felt my son calling for me. I know all the mothers who have lost a child know what it feels like. Carla Sheffield was one of many moms on stage that say their sons died at the hands of police. Brock Satter organized the musical speak out and says this is the first protest concert in the George Floyd era. This is about justice for the families. When did my blackness become a crime? Well over a thousand people came to hear the music and the speakers, all sponsored by the mass action against police brutality. Many liked what they heard. I'm here to listen, here to show support, and um, yeah, it's quite a powerful event. Policing as we know it needs to be completely torn down and rebuilt from the ground up so that stories like this can stop to happen. Organizers also are calling on Rachel Rollins to reopen up fatal Boston police shooting cases over the past 30 years. They also tonight raised money for some of those moms you saw on stage, sending them to a massive Mother's March in Minneapolis next month. Reporting live in Dorchester, I'm Ted Wayman, WCVB, News Center 5.